Right, um, I'm not even sure where to begin really. Um, this is the first time I've ever done a video to camera before. Um, so please bear with me. I'm not even sure whether anybody's going to watch this or not. Um, I've been wanting to do a channel for a long time um, about adults in my sort of age bracket who are not neurotypical um, and by that I mean adults who might have ADHD, ADD, uh, autism, um, including high functioning autism or Asperger's um, and other neurodevelopmental uh, disorders um, that affect their day-to-day -day lives in, in, a, in a detrimental manner. Um, beginning with me, um, I have ADHD and I was only diagnosed with ADHD a year ago, uh, almost exactly a year ago actually and um, albeit I've obviously had ADHD for my entire life um, and it has affected me negatively um, for my entire life. Uh, it didn't cross my mind that I might have ADHD uh, until my son was diagnosed with it at the age of 10, um, which is around about 14 years ago now, nearly 15 years ago, um, at which point his psychiatrist, having observed uh, me in his meetings, suggested that it was, uh, having observed me, it was likely that I had it as well. Um, but that I would need to go and get a diagnosis from a, an adult psychiatrist. Um, and at the time, I thought, what's the point? I've coped this far. You know, I've dealt with my life this far. And um, I've managed to bring up a son to the age of 10 without, you know, anything terrible happening to him. So, what you know, what, what's the advantage of having a diagnosis? I couldn't see any advantage at all. Uh, but my son's grown up now and left home quite some time ago and I also now live with someone um, in the marital sense who is autistic um, and again he was diagnosed belatedly he was diagnosed around about four years uh, ago now um, and I'm his carer uh, and I use, you know, in the air quotation marks for that because um, if I'm really brutally honest, I'm not very good at it. I'm not very good at caring um, and I don't, well, by that I don't mean caring in the love and support kind of way. I'm great at that. I'm great at loving and supporting and giving advice. Um, I'm great at talking generally, as you'll probably gather from these videos. But I'm not very good at caring domestically. Uh, and that's because I have ADHD. It crosses my mind at this point that I should probably tell you a little bit more about myself because uh, earlier on I mentioned um, wanting to talk about people in my age bracket um, who are neurodiverse, neurodivergent, whatever you care um, you know, whatever label you care to put on it. Um, and I haven't actually said what age bracket I'm in. And it might be obvious to some of you, it might not. But I'm 50. Um, and I was 49 when I was diagnosed. It, it didn't come as a shock to me. And in fact, at that point, I had been seeking a diagnosis for a while. Uh, because I was struggling. I was struggling to cope with the day-to-day -day aspects of domestic life that normal people um, consider run-of-the-mill and easy, easy to manage. Um, I don't, I don't cope with those things. Um, I have periods of time where I manage and periods of time where I don't and over the past five years or so, um, those uh, the, the the periods where I I don't manage um, have become um, longer, in, increasingly longer. Uh, 
and there are multiple reasons for that, I think. One is possibly the menopause, uh, although I've passed through the menopause and I'm out the other side now. Uh, but one, and I think that this is a really, really important factor, is that um, I left my hometown, not for the first time, uh, I have to say, but I left my hometown um, and moved 200 and some odd miles away uh, around about five years ago. Um, myself and my partner decided that our hometown was quite toxic and it wasn't doing us any good at all. It was very frenetic. There was too much going on there. It became very, very complicated and stressful um, to, to carry on living there. Uh, the job that I was doing at the time, which I had been doing very well and quite successfully for te uh, nine years, became untenable. Um, the workload that was being expected of me uh, just became too much um, uh, so as to be a, um, a, a mickey take basically. It, it just wasn't viable any longer um, and I got signed off work um, for quite a long period of time due to stress and depression. Um, depression is something else that I've suffered from for many many decades uh, but that's something I'll talk about in a future video. Uh, as well as the fact that I have also been diagnosed very recently with a personality disorder. Again, something that I'll talk about in future videos. Um, not to mention my partner um, and his difficulties um, with autism and mental health um, issues. Again, will be talked about in future videos and you will also um, meet uh, my partner, who's currently not here at the moment. So, life became untenable in our former hometown and we decided, well, to be fair, I decided because he isn't very good at deciding anything um, and I can be quite decisive when I want to be. We decided we needed to leave and we decided we needed to leave and go somewhere that had a slower, quieter pace of life for us somewhere where it would be far less complicated and we wouldn't be exposed to the, the sorts of uh, toxicity that we'd experienced um, in our hometown. And so I got a job in a school um, in the Lake District, in Penrith actually, and we found a house in an absolutely beautiful little village um, within the Lake District border, a dream come true, uh, you might think. And, and to be fair, in terms of that, it is a dream come true. We live in the most beautiful surroundings you could possibly imagine. Um, but, and here's the but, I hadn't allowed for the fact that where we lived before, my parents lived literally down the road, as did my partner's parents, um, not quite down the road, but not very far away from us. And my parents did a lot for me. Um, and I had never appreciated how much they had done for me, um, above and beyond the call of duty for the parents of a supposedly adult daughter. Um, I was working full time and until six years ago was bringing up a, a, a son um, on my own. Initially, uh, I was a single mother for, for a good long while. Um, I met my partner nine years ago, so we've been together for nine years. And things I didn't find it easy to manage. I didn't find it easy to juggle. And this is one of the things about ADHD uh, that, especially in adults, that I think people completely underestimate, um, is how difficult it is for us to manage multiple roles in life. 
um, being a mother, working full time, and the job that I was doing full time was an extremely responsible one, uh, uh, with a responsibility for uh, a few hundred teenage students in a high school, um, who all came with their own um, emotional baggage and neurodevelopmental disorders and behavioural problems, uh, uh, which it was my responsibility to uh, work with. Um, as well as being um, a housekeeper and being domesticated. And somewhere, something has to give in, in those situations. And I know that there will be those of you out there, you know, there will be single mothers managing three jobs and still keeping the house clean and tidy and being a wonderful mother. And God bless you. Um, and I admire you, respect you, look up to you. I think you're awesome. Um, but when I look at women like you, it makes me feel like a flake. It makes me feel completely and utterly 100% inadequate. Uh, and I have felt inadequate for most of my adult life. Uh, won't get into my childhood at this point because it's far too long a story. But I have felt inadequate in terms of that, in terms of my ability to manage multiple roles throughout my life, in terms of my ability to manage domesticity and organisation and being clean and tidy and functional. Um, life for me has generally been exhausting. At those times where I am managing um, to keep on top of things, and I can't remember the last time I did manage to keep on top of things, if I'm very honest with you, those times that I was managing I had to work so hard at it, so hard, um, to the point where stress became the, the overriding factor, stress, uh, which is why I was frequently signed off work, uh, because managing and coping, and my GP at the time always said that I was one of life's copers who coped for so long without asking for help, and asking for help is something that I am not good at. Um, that I'd cope for so long, things would mount up, the pressure would mount up to the point where I literally couldn't carry on. I would shut down. And um, that's what I've done throughout my entire life with regularity. I have just shut down. Um, and never ever been diagnosed with the right thing as a result of it. Um, it's only, as I said, very, very recently, I've been diagnosed with a personality disorder. And it's a personality disorder that I will have had certainly since early teenagehood, I would say, maybe even earlier. Uh, it would be something that I developed during childhood. I won't go into the intricate details of it in this video. Um, Partly uh, due to certain relationships within my childhood, which I won't go into at all at this point. Uh, but also partly due to, due to the fact that I had ADHD. And I had ADHD, but nobody knew I had ADHD. And that's largely because when I was a child, when I was growing up in the United Kingdom, ADHD just wasn't a thing. Nobody had heard of ADHD. I think probably in the United States, it was just coming to the to the to the fore. But in the United Kingdom, it just wasn't considered at all. Nobody nobody knew about it. And so, uh, how could my parents have been expected to know about it? They couldn't. Um, and therefore, the issues that I had were just seen as me being untidy, disorganized, forgetful lazy maybe at times um, my school reports um, accused me of being a daydreamer um, that I was very intelligent uh, but that I do f far far better if I wasn't constantly drifting off and daydreaming um, that obviously is the, the attention deficit that uh, we're talking about when we talk about ADHD 
um, in terms of me. My attention span is useless. Uh, I can only cope with so listening, for example, and listening is the big thing, listening for so long before I switch off and become uh, distracted either by something external. Oh, look, what's happening over there? Sorry, what were you saying? Um, or I retreat inside my own uh, my own brain, really. I, I begin to dissociate um, and drift off into my own inner world um, and manage at times to sort of give the semblance that I'm listening to somebody, but really nothing is going in. And and my partner has sort of cottoned onto this now uh, and will frequently say to me, you didn't hear a word of what I just said, did you? No, sorry, Guil guilty as charged. Um, see, this is ADHD for you. I have now completely lost my thread, can't remember what I was talking about, and I'm now gonna have to stop the video so that I can play it back so that I can remember exactly what I was saying. Uh, so this seems like a good place to actually talk about um, digression uh, as, a, as a symptom or a feature of ADHD because it's something that clearly um, uh, from the previous part of the video you'll have noticed that I'm very good at um, starting somewhere and ending up somewhere completely different without um, being able to recall how I got there flying off at tangents in a conversation um, certainly for me has been um, a major feature of ADHD uh, digressing to the point where I cannot actually remember what I was talking about in the first place but what I was talking about I'm going to be distracted by my whippet now no 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 I'm doing a video I'm doing a video I'm doing a video no, 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 no. Yes, okay, okay. I love you. Go on, off you go. Off, 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 off. I think he's a bit worried about me. He thinks I'm talking to myself. Um, I was talking about my parents, is the point, um, and why I found it so difficult, um, really, really difficult for the past five years. And it's because I have nobody to help me. Isn't that pitiful? I'm 50, I'm a 50 year old woman. I'm a 50 year old adult and I need help. Um, that's how I feel. I feel quite pitiful really, you know, that I should be able to manage everything. Um, I don't work anymore. I no longer work because I am my partner's carer. Um, but as I've said to you, I'm not very good at it. I'm not very good at the 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 day-to-day -day household management part of it then, shall I say. I'm very good at helping him with regards to autism. I am very good at helping him to frame situations that might be stressful to him and that might make him anxious. I am very good at managing it when he has an autistic meltdown. And autistic meltdowns are something that we will both of us uh, talk about in future videos. Um, so I won't elaborate on them and what they are if you, if you don't know uh, in this video. Um, and of course there are many people who will associate things like ADHD and autism with childhood and, and, and there are many of you who will know perfectly well uh, what these things look like in a child or in a teenager. Um, we've all seen hyperactive children um, who, you know, can seemingly not be kept under control. Um, but ADHD isn't something that just goes away because you grow up. It changes. Um, the way you deal with it changes. And certainly, if you knew you had it during childhood, you strategize for it. Um, and your teachers strategize for it and your parents strategize for it. My son, in that sense, was very lucky because he was diagnosed at the age of 10. So we developed strategies. His teachers developed strategies. I developed strategies. And most importantly, 
sorry, the dogs are now making a noise. Most importantly, he strategized for it. Um, and as a result of this, he's now 24 years old and extremely successful and functional, more so than me, more so by far than me. He's extraordinarily intelligent. Um, he has a master's degree from Cambridge University. That's how intelligent he is. Um, and forgive me for having a proud mum moment here. Um, he has the m best work ethic of anybody I know. He works so hard when he needs to. He is extremely organised because during childhood he strategised because he knew he had ADHD. He had help. He had the help that he needed. Those of us who weren't diagnosed until adulthood, and in my case particularly late adulthood, didn't have that advantage. We, we weren't diagnosed. Um, nobody knew what was wrong with us. So for most of our childhood uh, and teenagehood, all we'll have faced would have been criticism, uh, uh, and which was certainly the case for me. You know, you're so untidy, you're so messy, you're so disorganised. Oh, you need to get more organised. Oh, stop daydreaming. You know, just complete criticism without strategies, without anybody saying, why don't you do it like this? Why don't you try it this way? Um, why don't you start writing lists, for example? Uh, and it reaches a point where it's 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 kind of too late. Um, I know those strategies now, um, and I knew them because I was using them with my with my son, and also with the students that I worked with at the high school that I worked at. But um, hard as I might try. I have not managed to find a way to make those strategies work for me. And I think it's probably because um, the traits of ADHD, um, not to mention the personality disorder. Sorry, it sounds like my dogs are now killing each other while I'm trying to make this video. Enough, enough, enough. Um, see, I've lost my thread. Distracted, distracted by dogs. Um, not to mention my personality disorder, um, the traits are so embedded over 10 decades, not 10 decades, 10 decades, I'm not 100, five decades. Um, you can't teach an old dog new tricks is, is the cliche, isn't it? Um, and I, I hope I'm wrong. I really hope I'm wrong because I want to change. I want to get better. And... I'm now realising that this sounds like I'm having my own sort of self-indulgent pity party and it, and it really isn't that. I don't want anybody to feel sorry for me and I don't feel hard done by, by others. Um, my problems are just an unfortunate um, aspect of having ADHD um, and a personality disorder. And... One way or another, I'm, I'm trying to uh, work my... I, I am getting external help in terms of, uh, of trying to cope. Um, and this, these videos are not going to be about me or my partner feeling sorry for ourselves. Um, they are just to illustrate the difficulties that people of our age group have. And how they shouldn't be underestimated. It's very easy to think, oh, ADHD, it's nothing serious. It... No, in the grand scheme of things, it isn't anything serious. Sorry, I had to stop filming again there because the dogs were uh, play fighting and making way too much noise for me to continue and they were too much of a distraction for me. Um, and now, once again, I've completely forgotten what I was saying. Where was I? So, um, I don't want people to think that this video or, or any future videos are going to be about us feeling sorry for ourselves because that isn't the case. Um, it is just to hopefully illustrate the difficulties for people our age and also um, to make, uh, and to educate, I guess, to educate for those of you who haven't got a clue about ADHD or autism or personality disorders 
um, or the fact that any of those things actually affect um, older adults in the way that they do. But also maybe um, it will speak to people who also have ADHD or autism or personality disorders who identify with some of the things that I'm saying. Um, I'm not going to carry on uh, now because I think this video is going to be long enough as it is for a first video. Um, so I think I'm going to sign off here um, and if enough people view this video um, I will definitely then be making more to elaborate on um, ADHD in general uh, and what that means, on autism in general and what that means and in future future videos I'll talk a bit more about the personality uh, disorder side of things. Um, I hope you found this video kind of interesting um, and if you have I would love it if you'd comment below and um, tell me what more you might want to hear about with regards to being my age um, and having ADHD or any other aspect of, of our lives for that matter. The fact that we moved to the Lake District, working in a high school, could be anything. Uh, please, please comment um, and let me know uh, your thoughts. Thanks for watching and please don't forget to subscribe if you really did uh, find this, in, this video interesting.